with you here, obviously with Freddie last year, the news of Freddie calling the plays, I'm just wondering um, what you think of that and uh, if there's any kind of leg up, leg up or anything that either side will have with the familiarity factor. No, I haven't given it much thought. I mean, I, I feel bad for Jason. I hope he's okay. Um, you know, Freddie Lou do a great job. Freddie was good to me. I like Freddie. He's a good man. Um, obviously, tough, tough, tough situation last year, and and I know he bounced back, and I know he's going to do a great job. But um, I really haven't given it much thought. I got other things to worry about with the Giants than than who's calling the plays. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Nate. Next is Scott Petrick. Hey, Mike. Cody's been so good for you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Did you notice anything Monday night in those two misses? Yeah, he just pulled the one, and then the second one, is his heel barely hit the ground, and he pushed it right. He said, it's inexplicable. I mean, it's inexcusable, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Um, he knows that. You know, he, he can't miss those kicks. And one of our goals going in, we knew the type of kicker we were play, uh, playing against, and we were going to try to match him kick for kick, and, you know, and we didn't do that. And, and we kind of let our team down in that regard. But, um, you know, the, the – key was there he made those last two one to take the lead 35 34 and one to tie it at the end 42 all um i was real proud of the way he responded there and you know he doesn't miss a beat now he's very calm very collected he's got a very even keel about him which i really like about him and um you know great kickers don't miss two in a row and and uh but you know he just he had a bad night and he knows it and and he's going to grow and get better and he had a good day yesterday he's going to have a good day today and we'll keep getting better coach Stefanski said so much goes into deciding whether or not to go for two versus taking the extra point, but did the two misses weigh heavily into the decision to go for two there? The way I understand it is that they had a two-point play that they really liked in, in that situation, and you know I think we had the deflection that well, we got it, and, and that cut it to six, and that was, a, that was a big play for us. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Next, we'll go to Tony Grossi. Hey, hi, Mike. Hey, Tony. Um, I have another question, but the first one is, when your opponent head coach came through the special teams ranks as Joe Judge and Harbaugh and, and others you might have encountered along the way. Does that put you as special teams coordinator on even higher alert? Um, I don't know if it's any higher alert than any normal week. It just depends on their philosophy. Um, obviously, John's done a great job as a head coach in, in Baltimore, and, and he's always had good special teams. And every week, every time I've gone against him, it's been a, it's been a a good game, a tough game, a, a hard fought game. And, and I know Joe's doing a great job as a leader in New York. And, and uh, I think he's a heck of a coach. He was a heck of a special teams coordinator as well. Um, I think what you do see is a little bit of their personality rubbing off on the special teams units. Uh, Thomas McGay, he's in New York and he's an outstanding special teams coordinator. And you can see some, obviously a lot of, his, uh, excuse me, see a lot of his influence and you see a lot of Joe's influence as well. So any more high alert? I don't think so. I just think you got to prepare for what they do best. This isn't my second question, but uh, as far as trick plays go, is what I meant. Uh, the oh, yeah. head coach who was special came up through special teams might be more confident in pulling something off. Yeah, if they think they can get one on us, I mean, I think we're really sound in what we do. Um, I know New York against Dallas, they threw that hideout play on field goal. Um, they scored a touchdown, but it was called back. They were moving inside and um, and stuff like that. But that's you know, Joe. Joe did that in New England. Um, uh, Joe's biggest influence, I think, on the Giants special teams has been their punt rush. They use big guys and they bring it, man. They they are very aggressive. They're big and strong, and and uh, we've got to be stout in our protection to get the ball out of there and, and have a good day on punt. My, my other question was, why did you guys not uh, call timeout and freeze Justin Tucker? It's Justin Tucker. Doesn't affect them. Wouldn't have done anything. I'm not a big freeze guy anyway, because. You guys would be asking me a different question right now. You would ask Coach Stefanski a different question if we call timeout and as he's kicking or right before the snap and he misses it. So, I mean, that was a 55-yarder. That was a heck of a kick. And if it's 57 yards, he's going to miss it because it started fading left on him. And and that's a dog pound in. And, I mean, that was a heck of a kick. It was a great kick with a, by a great kicker. And, and I don't think it would have faded, uh, phased him at all. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tony. Our next question will be from Dan Lobby. Hey, Coach, uh, obviously, I, I know you never really got a chance to, to coach Jabril when he was here. but I know. Um, I was bummed out about that. <laughs> so, I mean, did you get a chance to look at him when he was coming out of Michigan? And, and just kind of what do you think of him as a returner? He's an outstanding returner. He's, he's huge. I mean, he's big and he's strong. And people just bounce off him like they're not even there. Um, I told the guys we got to gang tackle him. I mean, we need as many guys around him as we possibly can. And, 
Um, you know, the guy is confident. He catches the ball extremely well. He's also quick enough to make the first guy miss coming down there. So not only do we have to be under control from either the point of attack, you got to have got to have a lot of guys around him to try to gang tackle him and get him down because he's, he's he's 219 pounds and he runs like he runs. So you know, he poses a different threat than a smaller, quicker guy. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Marla Reidenauer, we'll go to you. Yeah, one more quick thing about Peppers. Just because he's such an all-around athlete, I mean, do you almost have to tell your guys that, you know, he's got so many skills that you might not see, you know, and it was, you know, besides speed, you know what I mean? Like, you have to prepare them for the fact that he can do it all. Yeah, exactly right. And he's very confident. So he'll catch the ball at the five-yard line if it's a line drive punt. And so, you know, we're in that plus 50 range. And next thing you know, he's bringing out from the five, and he's got 15 yards before you get anybody there. So, our, you know, Jamie's got to do a great job in every situation. we got to limit the ability for him to get going his returns. Our gunner's got to have a great plan every time we go down there to go make a play. Um, I remember where I was when I found out about the trade. When he was gone, I was, I was very depressed. I was really looking forward to coaching that young man because I know he's a great kid. And he would have ran the punt team. He would have been the punt returner. I know he's an outstanding safety. Um, just a very good football player. So did you, you admired him when he was in college too? I admired him when I studied him coming out. I don't watch a ton of college games, right. but when I was studying all the returns coming out that year, he was up, I think, first or second coming out. I think, you know, he's very high ranked. And so when I knew I was coming here and for, I think, a month or so while I was, I was you know, coaching here, I didn't meet him yet because we were in the offseason program yet. But um, I was really excited about coaching him. So he's, he's a great player. Thank you. Thank you, Marla. Tom Weathers is next. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Mike, sorry if I missed this. As far as Cody's misses, just mechanics, um, understep, overstep, pick his head up. What happened? No, he just pulled the one and then pushed the other. Easy adjustment then? I mean, no, nothing. Very easy. He made the adjustments. He drilled the next, uh, or at least the last two. Yeah, he's fine. He'll be okay. Gotcha. And as far as, as, as Justin Tucker, who is, you know, a, as good as we've seen in, in a long time in this league, mm -hmm. do you time with your kickers analyzing other kickers and what they do I know everybody has their own kind of individual thing that they do well but is he somebody yeah. to model after you know I study all these guys uh, study when they come out and study them while they they're in the league um, but every like you said every kicker is a little bit different and I think a young kicker like I remember we told the story when Austin came back he had a great spring as you know right after we drafted him and he started studying different kickers and trying to model himself after some different kickers. And he came back and messed himself up. If you guys remember the beginning <laughs> of training camp in 19, right. he really struggled and went back and studied tape on what made him successful as a, as, as Austin Seibert. And he made those adjustments and won himself a job. So I think anytime you overanalyze what other kickers do and try to do exactly what they do, it, you kind of mess yourself up a little bit. But, you know, Justin's technique is different than a lot of guys. He's a taller, thinner guy. Um, but he's got such a powerful leg swing, leg whip. And, you know, it's, it, like I said, his technique, his approach is a little bit different than, than other guys. But I, I think you, unless you're built like him and, and you got the leg swing like him, which not right. many do, um, I wouldn't model anything off of what he does. Just admire what he does for a living. He does a great job. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Tom. We'll take two more. Scott Petrick, Nate Ulrich. Scott, go ahead. Hey, Mike, I know we've asked you about Donovan a lot, but when did you know that he had kind of the right makeup to be a guy that doesn't back down in big moments? When I met him at the Combine, I had a nice interview with him at the Combine, and I just liked his demeanor. I liked how he carried himself. I liked his quiet confidence that we've talked about before. Um, you know, beginning when they got here, obviously they didn't have the spring to work, but, you know, just talking to him, meeting with him one-on-one -on, -one on those Zoom meetings in the off-season program and then getting to know him a little bit, you know, here as the training camp started, I could see him, you know, he's got what it takes. Um, obviously, he's growing as a receiver. He's growing as a returner. Um, I'd like to use him a little bit more at Gunner in the plus 50 situations. I think we're getting to that point where we might be able to throw him in the games doing that. So there are some different things that he's doing and growing and getting better. Um, I think it all started, though, with that first interview. I mean, what's it say about him that on that one of the key drives, Baker throws that back shoulder to him, you know, on the first play and trusts him to catch it? The great thing, I think Coach O'Shea has done a phenomenal job with him in He's done a phenomenal job of learning all three spots as a receiver. So Coach O'Shea can trust him. He can go in the game and he can play any spot. He understands what to do. He understands coverages. He understands his routes. Um, I, I, I really am proud of him and his, his development as a returner and as an offensive player. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. And the last question will be from Nate Ulrich. 
Mike, I was just wondering on the, the block kick you guys had, um, if there's anything, uh, you know, that you can take forward from that or something that, you know, Vincent Taylor took to the field that you guys had seen or anything like that? No, you know, they're very good in protection. You know, he doesn't get very many blocked and he's got, got such phenomenal elevation that you have to get good penetration, get your hands up. And Vincent did a great job. I mean, he normally does when he's in there and, you know, Sheldon Richardson, Larry Ogunjobi, those guys, those big D tackles in there have done a great job for us all year. And I just, and my only coaching point to them is just keep coming and, and keep doing those little things and keep getting thin, try to get thin through a big guy just getting thin. It's funny, but try to get thin through that gap and get your hand up in the kick plane as he's kicking the ball. And the, the timing of it's always very difficult to time up, but, you know, Vincent takes a lot of pride in that as most of our D line, if not all our D line does. And, you know, we got Der uh, Denzel Ward coming back this week. He does a great job coming off the edge. I think he was the one two years ago uh, in 2018, he blocked one off the edge against Tucker. So, um, it was a big play for us because at that big point, and I thought we should have scored. I thought we had, Tavier had a chance to score, and um, you know we went down with the ball. I thought, you know, hoping to flip the ball there, but we'll get that coached up.